Dr. Elan Ziv, you are a CEO and medical director of Comtip Medical in Israel. Right. Uh, you are in Brussels to present a new revolutionary disposal device as a non-surgical option for women suffering of pelvic organ prolapse. Right. Why Brussels? Because Brussels is a good place to start with. And the point here is just we're here just to make awareness to the problem because this is a, a tremendous problem. Actually, it happens everywhere. It's, it's been there for hundreds of years, probably thousands of years, but people just don't talk about it. So we, we just used the, uh, the arena here with the European community and the European Parliament here just in order to move forward and to push, even to push governments into developing more devices, more awareness, or mainly awareness, to this problem of PLP, pelvic organ problems. Could you elaborate about the, this problem? We're talking about a problem that affects probably about 50% of the women about the age of 30 worldwide, anywhere in the world. There was a time that we thought that the East, so like Asia Pac, there is no such problem or it's very rare, not at all. And now we know that about 29% of the problem happens in the Asia Pac arena. The, um, the, the big point here is that most women are shy, afraid. This is just like a taboo. They don't come forward and say, we've got a problem and we want to discuss it and we want to discuss the possible treatments. And only about 6 to 7% of the women really come forward and say, we've got a problem, please advise us what to do. Not necessarily to have treatment, but at least to understand what is the problem, what is... Uh, from, what is um, of prolapsing and um, we still the numbers don't change it's still the same number from about 20 or 30 years ago it's the still same numbers and women just don't admit that they've got a problem so we developed a new device which I'll show you in a minute the point here is that this device just needs the women to to know about it because it is developed for women it is very um, very different from what we have today and we can just uh, have women just use the device whenever they wish at their own will and wherever they want it. This device is already uh, available in North America? Not this device. This not device is not available at all. Ah, at all. We just, uh, the device is ready for the market. It has a C mark for marketing in Europe. It has an FDA clearance for marketing in the United States from last week. And this was the trigger to move forward and start talking about the device, just making the awareness. But this device is not in the market yet. What we do have in the market is a previous device for stress urinary incontinence, not for pelvic organ prolapse. Um, the device for incontinence was acquired by Kimberly Clark and it's already on shelves in North America, not yet in Europe. And uh, why not yet in Europe? I have no idea. The device belongs to them and this is their, um, this is re their responsibility to decide upon the business. So do you think that the new device uh, will be available soon uh, in Europe? I guess so. One of the points that we look for um, by traveling to here is just to make awareness to both sides. First the women to know about it but the other point is to to make the big companies to know about it because we are looking for a um, collaborator in order to take the device in the market. This is a device that will need um, advertisement, needs marketing, and we need somebody who's a professional to go into this and to do that far better than what we can do. Israel is a well-known hub for innovation right. in uh, several sectors. Right but especially in medicine. Right. How do you explain this? Uh, I don't think I can explain it. This is something in the in Jewish people that just makes them makes the need to try and invent new things every day. Uh, in our case, for instance, I think we are the only company in the world that do only non-invasive and disposable vaginal devices for pelvic floor disorders. This is such a tiny uh, point in medicine altogether, still we only do that. Dr. Alan Ziv, thank you very much. My pleasure. My pleasure.
And I think one more thing, if you'd like to see, is I think the point is, if you'd like to see what we have today in the arena for, um, for the, for the non-surgical treatment, I can show it to you, and then I'll show you my device as well, so you'll understand what's, what's the difference. What we have today, mm -hmm. what we call the currently available pessary or currently available devices, is a device that looks like that. Most of them, about 120 different shapes, but the most prevalent one is a ring pessary. This is called the pessary. And the way it goes today is that this is squeezed by a doctor like that and inserts in, inserted into the vagina. Mm -hmm. It may remain in the vagina for up to three months. Then the woman comes again to the, um, to the doctor. But then he cannot squeeze the device. So he just takes the device out, which definitely winds the device. This is a small device of about 70 millimeters, but we usually use them much larger, so like 80, 90, and 100 millimeters. And it's definitely uncomfortable and even painful just to insert the device and to remove the device. Then the device is cleaned when it's taken out, cleaned in running water, and then again we play, um, uh, insert it into the vagina. So again, it's, this is a reusable device that a woman may use for five, ten years or so. Nobody likes to, to go with a device which is reusable, just been slightly cleaned. Nobody likes to, to come to a doctor every three months. So we have developed a device which is completely different. Our device is only 25 millimeter is in width. It goes that way. It goes into the vagina by the user herself, not by the doctor. It is inserted into the vagina by the user whenever she wants it and wherever she wants it. When she ins it's already within the vagina, she just presses the plunger, it becomes a ring, and then further pressing the plunger, it separates between the device, which is that, and the applicator. And the applicator goes to the dustbin, cannot be reused. This device may be may remain in the vagina for up to seven days. And I say up to seven days, she may replace it every seven days, but she may also say that okay, she wants to replace every two days. Or up to her to decide what she wants and whatever she takes. She wants, she just pulls the string, mm. the device shrinks back in 25 millimeters and just goes out of the vagina for disposal. You cannot reuse the device. And this is a tremendous change because what we're actually saying by that there are two big uh, social messages here. The one is the shift of control because it goes to the hands of the women. It's only up to her, and that's the second thing, is to decide. The freedom to decide. She is the one who decides whenever she wants to take it out, whenever she wants to insert it. This is totally up to her, not to the medical system. What would be the price, the cost of a such a device? We plan in the United States, we started with the United States because it's easier for us. We can, in Europe, there's 27 different countries here, so it might cost different in every country. But in the United States, it's about three and a half dollars per device. Mm -hmm. We think of about $420 per year, which is exactly the cost that the medical system pays for that to the doctors for replacing the device every year. So actually this is completely cost neutral. Thank you. My pleasure.